What's the bigger issue with the Ravens? The offensive line or tackling on defense? Is it time for Ravens defensive coordinator Wink to cook up a new strategy? Should Eric DeCosta make a trade that would actually make the Ravens overkill at a certain position that nobody's thinking about? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Sam Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. The very first question from subscribers as we head into the bye week, which is well needed. Oh, uh, well, question from subscribers is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com for the patrons. And shout out to all of our Team Keep It Clean patrons. Y'all can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, without further ado, team, keep it clean. We got a lot of good questions to get into. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Our first question came from my guy, Reese, and I'm giving him a pass because maybe because of the beatdown that Ravens took, maybe it messed his mind up a little bit and he sent it to the incorrect email. But only just this once will I give a pass for that. But anyway, he said, this is fresh off the beating we took. What do you think is more important, trying to fix the offensive line or defensive tackling? I know Bell doesn't have that burst, but if the defensive line is in the backfield almost doing the handoff, what running back is running out of that? Uh, that's my thinking of the offensive line. I would think tackling would be second nature to any defensive player, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Not giving up on the squad, but if this tackling remains an issue, we have a big yikes for the rest of the season. Let's see what happens with the bye. If you or anybody else already repeated this, my bad is I haven't looked at any post-game thoughts from you, Edgar Allen, or all 22 NFL cuts. All right, so this is a, uh, a really, really good question um, to start us off. Uh, what is, do I think is more important to fix? What's the bigger issue right here? Is it the fixing the offensive line or fixing the defense with their tackling? Mm. I um, Wow, that, that is tough, man. That, like, it's really, really tough. Because you think about scenarios for both. You think about with the tackling. If, if defense tackle better, then a lot of these big plays, they wouldn't be so such big plays. Like uh, Jamar Chase, that 82-yard touchdown, that's like an eight-yard slant. That's it. If the defense tackles. But <laughs> since nobody wanted to tackle, and he, he was like a slip and slide. Everybody just falling and sliding. He just took off to the house, man. Uh, wow, this is such a good question. Um, wow. I, uh, and then you think offensive line, like, that would help. Because you we've seen it, especially this year. You give Lamar Jackson time, ooh. It's a beautiful thing when Lamar Jackson got time. But we haven't got to see that beautiful thing too much. And the offensive line has just been inconsistent. They've been banged up. They've just been all over the place. They've been good, and they've been bad, and they've been everything in the middle, too. Whew. But what's more important? Hmm. Because without an offensive line, that just kills drives, it kills points. Without tackling, <laughs> that continues drives and that gives points. So it's like both are like just as important as each other because that's where everything starts. Well, not necessarily for defense, but for offense, everything starts up front. For defense, everything starts up front too. But once it gets to that second and third level, if you can't tackle, then it's going to get to the fourth level, which would be uh, behind the defense and in the end zone. Um, man, I would say offensive line by a hair. And the reason I would say offensive line is because if Ravens could, and I don't know how they would do it, like, because I don't know how they would fix either one. How, how do you fix tackling? How, how do you fix that? Like, what, what do you do to fix players tackling? Like, because that's something that's fundamental. It's not like you can go and get one player and that one player will be the end-all, be-all to your tackling woes. It's not like, oh, you, you get a new coach and that coach will be the end-all, the end be-all to your tackling. Like, what do you do to fix tackling? Now, for the offensive line, what can you do to fix the offensive line? Could you go out and sign somebody? Could you trade for somebody? I, you, you're a little limited for money now, but I, it's, it's, I don't know what they're going to do there. And you just lost Patrick McCarr. You just lost your right tackle. So, yeah, yeah you just you got to hope that these guys like get some deer antlers spray before the game. I don't know, man. But anyway, 
Um, I would say offensive line by a hair because with the offensive line, if they're protecting the quarterback, in this case, they're protecting Lamar Jackson, less pressure is put on him to really start pressing. He'll have to do less because when he's not getting protected, as we saw last game, he starts pressing and he's like, man, I, I just, I got to do it. I got to do everything. And that has him forcing the issue. Uh, there was like a pass on third and one where they forced it to Hollywood. Thank goodness it wasn't picked off. Like it, was, it just went past everybody, which was good. Um, but Hollywood was double covered. And, and when you're not getting protection, that, that clock starts going off in your head a lot sooner than it should. Uh, and, and if you're not getting protection, you're getting hit all game too, like in the Bengals game. If you're not getting protection, you're going to get sacked. You're going to get hit. You just you won't have a comfortable day in the pocket. And if you're not having a comfort, comfortable day in the pocket, that takes away points from the Ravens. And that does the opposing defense so many favors. Now, in turn, I think when, you, when you're not getting protection uh, with the offensive line, if your offensive line is better, and it's not only for protection, it's for running the ball too, but we're just speaking about protection right now. Um, like he, the receivers that they got, they got, these, they got some receivers now, man. You got, you got Hollywood. You got Bateman. Bateman been coming along strong. And every single pass he's caught went for a first down. But and you got Mark Andrews. You about to get Sammy back. Like you got you got some receivers now. But um what good are they if you have no protection, you have no time to throw it to them? And when you do have time, uh, so to speak, like well, not even time, because you're you're back there running around and trying to evade defenders. While these guys still run their routes and, and they just hope that the ball can come their way. And you got to hope that you see them at the right time while you trying to make a defender miss in the backfield because the offensive line couldn't block them. So it just and, and then it starts uh, again, the pressing. It starts Lamar to pressing because, again, like I said on Sunday, I, he ran into two sacks. He ran into two of them, one by the one by Ogan Joby and one of them by Hubbard. He ran into both of those. That's because all, all game, he wasn't getting blocked. He, was, he wasn't getting blocked for I me. Mean. So, you, again, you just start pressing, you start forcing the issue, and it's, it's tough. So, with the, um, the offensive line, if your offensive line isn't blocking, then you're not scoring. Well, it makes it harder to score. It's not like it's impossible, but it makes it a lot harder to score. Uh, the, the best quarterbacks, if they ain't got an offensive line, they look the worst. Look at, again, I, I hate bringing this up because it's like it happened so long ago. But look at Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Biggest stage of them all. Biggest game. Where that offensive line go? They disappeared. They didn't block. They didn't block for Patrick Mahomes. He couldn't do anything. He's running around. He's looking like Lamar Jackson from 2020. And a lot of times from this year too. But it, it, was, it was rough. So Ravens fans, we know what it's like to have an offensive line that's just not blocking. Um, so with uh, I, I would I would say offensive line because that would also take a take a lot of pressure off the defense. And the reason I say that is because if you if you have an offensive line, again we've seen Ravens with an offensive line. We've seen when they block, Ravens move the ball downfield. Right, the Ravens make some plays happen. Uh, Ravens score points. So if they score in points, then the defense. That creates less pressure on them because say, if they can get a couple stops early on and the offense is scoring points, then that'll put the offense, so that'll put the Ravens up. So with the defense, yeah, they're still going to have to tackle, but it just it, it can make the opposing offense more one-dimensional. So again, while you still have to tackle, the, a lot of running plays could be eliminated because the opposing offense could be like, ah, right, we can't run the ball as much no more because we got to play catch-up because these Ravens scored all these points on us, so we got to try to catch up with them. So that takes away a lot of running plays. So now you just got to wrap up catch up, wrap up with all the receivers in front of you, keep them in front of you, and wrap up when they catch the ball, if they catch the ball. So, it, again, it makes your job a little bit easier when the offense, they put in their work. Because I, I said uh, about this game, it happened this game, and it happened some other games too. Offense is a, is a big reason too for the defense struggling. So offense, they, they take some of the blame too because they weren't scoring. If you don't score, and, and the defense, was, again, this last game, the defense was holding the Bengals. Early on, they were holding the Bengals. But the offense just was not scoring. They weren't scoring. And since the offense wasn't scoring, the defense, all right, we're right back out here again. And that gives us another opportunity not to tackle. Not that it's an excuse. They should always be tackling. And the tackle has just, just been outright bad. 
all all year long for the most part. Like I said, been a couple of games, been a Chargers game and ninety nine percent of the Broncos game. But the, the tackling all year has been bad. It's been all kinds of bad. And I, I just I don't get it. I don't know what I don't know what can fix it. I don't know, but it's been bad. So that would just I, I, I again I would say offensive line. And another reason I say offensive line to another benefit would be for the running, the running game. We know that this running game, like he said, he said Le'Veon Bell, he ain't got that same burst that he used to. I think Ray Ravens waiting for it. They they wait they waiting on Le'Veon Bell to make that cut and, and not necessarily take off. Cause we know Le'Veon Bell not no takeoff type of running back, but they were they waiting on because with Le'Veon Bell them blocks they got to be perfect, man. They got to be perfect. He's not one of those running backs that's like gonna create this big lane or he ain't gonna create his own play. He needs them blockers to be on point. Um. So he is a smart runner, but he ain't gonna like oh Le'Veon Bell made this. Nah, that's that's not him at this point in his career. Um, especially with his offensive line. But if the offensive line was better, it'd make it easier for Le'Veon Bell, for Devontae Freeman, for Latavius Murray when he gets back, for Tyson Williams, who I do not think will be here by the Vikings game. I just don't. I think the um for Tyson Williams, I think that last play, and I was confused. I was like, what's going on? Tyson, I was like, come on, man. We, we've been defending you, hoping you get more opportunity. And I know the game was, it was it was far. I think the Ravens were down by 17 at that point. Maybe, I think. I forgot what the score was. Were they down by 10? Maybe they were down by 10. I don't even remember what the, what the score was at that point. But where Tyson, Lamar threw it to Tyson on that fourth down. And he made one guy miss. And then... The second guy was coming for him, and he just slowly uh, went out of bounds. And I was like, what was that? How, how can you do that knowing, like, again, it's all about situational football. And then there was, I don't know if it was that same drive, but then there was a play where uh, Lamar, they, they called the play or whatever, and I think they were changing the play. I think Lamar was calling the audible. There was something that was going on, and Tyson was just lost. He just ain't know what was going on. And Lamar was like yelling at him and telling him to move. And Tyson was just standing there like that. And I was like, oh, boy. And then they either got to delay a game or they had to call a timeout. Something happened. I forgot what happened on that play. But it was just that confusion. And then that, that last play on the fourth down where he just slowly just, uh, he made like I said, he made the first guy miss. And this is fourth down now. So you got to get a first to keep it moving. So he made the first guy miss. And then he just all ran out of bounds after that. And I was like, what? Like. You didn't try to like pitch it back or something like the game. Again, the game is like it's not. I, I forgot whether it's a ten point game or seventeen point game at that point. But you're not even trying to like look for somebody behind you to pitch it back to us. Like try something. Like again, you got to cut up field. You can't just oh run out of bounds. You can't do that. So again, with Tyson Williams, I think he was he was already in the doghouse. He was already there. But I think this game, like I, I like I, I said before this game. That I didn't think he was, I thought he was going to get traded. And after this game, that stands even more. Uh, Ravens, they're not invested in him. And I know we're going way off from what the question was originally. But Ravens are not invested in him. And I think this game just really sealed, the, sealed his fate and sealed the deal for how they feel about him. And I just, I, I don't see him remaining with the team much longer. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Hey, okay, but I think that this game really sealed the deal for him. Um, Cause that was just that's a lack of effort, and it's all about effort, man. Um, and since you, he doesn't have anything like he doesn't have any ties to the team. There's nothing that Tyson Williams has right now that holds him to the Ravens. He doesn't have a big contract. He is not. A, he's not. He's not even drafted. He's not a draft pick. So he's yeah. I think he's gonna be gone. Next question came from my guy Elix. He said, "Hey, I want to thank you and all team. Keep it clean for asking questions, and you answer those questions too. Hope you guys are blessed and highly favored. Appreciate it, Elix." He said, "Number one, do you think it's time for Wink to cook up a new defensive strategy?" I'm not saying this because Fruit Punch had a bad game. Or anything. <laughs> Look like Fruit Punch, he got stole. But anyway. Um, I'm not saying this because Fruit Punch had a bad game or anything. Everyone has their days, and I know this because I played the sport. I'm saying this because football game is it is chess, not checkers. And right now, I, I like the, to think that Wink is playing checkers with four. 
40-yard games. <laughs> Remember, the game of football is more mental than physical. So do we think it's time for Wayne to cook up a new strategy? Not necessarily a new strategy, but he has to be better. He has to be situationally better. He has to be more like, like somebody said in the comment section, he has to be more responsible. And you have to realize like, hey, know who your personnel is and try to put, and this is what our problem, or I, can, I can only speak for myself. This is what my problem was with Giro, especially last year. Use players to their strengths. Why are we not using players to their strengths? This year, they've been doing a much better job with that on offense. Now, on defense, use players to their strengths. But not only that, let's counter their weaknesses. If these players are struggling with this, that, and the third, okay, let's try to mask that. Let's try to hide that. Let's try to disguise that. So defense, I mean, so offenses don't take advantage of it. Because it's, it's so important that you put your players in positions where they can succeed. This defense hasn't been succeeding. The Ravens have been winning now. And, but the defense, they've been giving up a lot. Overall, it's been a couple games here and there. With, oh, all right, yeah. But they've been giving up a lot. And it's been some games where they, they made some clutch plays, but they've still been giving up a lot. A whole lot. And again, with the blitzing, for me, the situation, it's all about the situation. I, I ain't about to be like, oh, yeah, Wink, stop blitzing. Don't blitz no more. Don't blitz. But in a game like to, against the Bengals, I would say, oh, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's dial it back a little bit. Because, again, every time, it's, it's funny because every time, well, they would usually, besides the last time we played the Chiefs, but usually every time we, uh, we face a quarterback, and they'd be like, oh, this quarterback is this successful against the blitz. We'd be like, oh, boy, <laughs> we know Wink's going to send them. Uh, and usually, again, besides the Chiefs game this year, but the past couple of Chiefs games, they would show that statistic. Oh, Patrick Mahomes is so successful against the Blitz. He completing this many of his passes. This is how many touchdowns he threw. He ain't throwing no interception against the Blitz. And then what, what did Wink do? He sent them boys right at Patrick Mahomes, and he got burned. But then in the, this past Chiefs game, he's like, nah, let's hold him back. And guess what happened? It, I mean, he still got burned a little bit now, but it worked. Um, and then Joe Burrow. Yeah, young quarterback now. Second year quarterback now. But Joe Burrow, he's also been successful against the Blitz. What did Wink do? Early on, it was working. Early on, it was working. But as the game went on, it just it didn't work anymore. It didn't work anymore. But... You, 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 when you blitz so much, you, you leave guys one-on-one. -on -one, and if your guys ain't like that, then they ain't like that. And right now, uh, well, at least in that game, Marlon Humphrey definitely wasn't like that. Um, but you just, you got to give you guys help. Got to give you guys help. So, anyways, next question. He said, do you think EDC or Every Dollar Count should send a third or fourth round pick to Chicago to get Allen Robinson? For what? Oh, well, again, well, I, I, should, I shouldn't have cut him off. He said... Now, hear me out, because he must have known that was coming. He said, now, hear me out when I say this. He doesn't look unhappy over there, and we are missing uh, an actual stud. When I mean stud, I mean a guy that will tell DBs, it's going to be a long day for you. Defenses are going into games like, let's stop Lamar Jackson's feet and play sticky ball with Hollywood and Bateman. With a guy like A-Rob, he requires a lot of attention, and Hollywood and Bateman and other receivers are facing the two, the second or third cornerbacks. Well, that's why you hope that Sammy Watkins comes back. Like, the the receivers have been fine this year. They really have. I mean, I would you all know I wouldn't mind overkill, but the receivers have been fine. But Allen Robin, he's on, I think he's on a franchise tag right now. So the Raven, if they were to trade for him, uh, every last one of the games of this year would be guaranteed, like all the way guaranteed. And there are, what, 12 games left? Because we in week seven? Yes, yeah, so I think it's 12 games left. Um, so, oh, wait a minute. Well, we five and two, so that's seven games. And it's, uh, 17 games. Okay, so it's 10 games left. Um, but it's, it's 10 games left. And, like, every, his salary began, Ravens can't afford him. Long story short, they can't afford him. But, even still, even if they could, I mean, again, y'all know I love overkill. Especially a receiver for the Ravens, because, you know, Ravens do a lot of underkill. But, it's not, that's not necessary. That's like... They don't receivers the last thing that 
we are thinking about right now. And that's crazy. That's crazy to say, right? As Ravens fans, receiver is the last thing that we're thinking about right now. We we never said that before. Ever said that before? Never. But all of our minds are on offensive line. We've been thinking linebackers, corner safeties, defensive line. Like that's where our minds running back. But no, we're not thinking wide receiver. That's a beautiful thing. So I, I would say no to Allen Robinson, and um, because he he's he's not. He doesn't put the Ravens over the top. He he wouldn't put them as oh all right they got Allen Robinson now all right well now they legit no they their receivers are fine and that's crazy to say but I love it. And then his last question he said I remember watching one of the videos where someone says that the Ravens don't have aggression on our team. Uh, but I think that it's not that I think we just don't have any guts or pride as a linebacker and offensive lineman. Um, I love putting the two hundred to three hundred pound person on it, but then jump on him and, and shake my body like I caught the holy oh boy this guy. Um, it, they are they're missing. Uh, they just yeah they missing some a little bit of heart right now, especially on defense I would say. But even uh, on offense, like I think my guy Howard he brought up in one of his questions, he said that the Ravens they don't have one of those mauler those just big bodies that are just knock somebody down. They don't have that right now on the offensive line. He said they got a bunch of technicians, and that was a really good point. Um, but also, too, with that, that's, I think that's one of the reasons why the run game has just not been working. One, because of the running backs. Because, again, I uh, y'all know, I thought that losing, um, I mean, losing Marcus Peters was a huge blow. But I, I thought Gus and, I thought with Gus and J.K., like, all right, losing them is tough. It sucks, especially because both of them, were, they were about to do their thing. Like, we, man, this team was, like, so well put together this season, except the offensive line. There's some question marks there. But beside that, they were so well put together this year. So well put together. And then ah, it just all crashed because of injuries. Um, but I thought that with J.K. and Gus, Gus Edwards, I was about to say Gus Dobbins, uh, that they, not that they were replaceable, but they would be the easiest to replace, if you get what I mean, and Justice Hill. I, I just thought that um, we could, it, I thought it was just it could be plug and play. But this season has proven that it's not plug and play at all. It's not. Um, so it's been a blow. But yeah, the offensive line, yeah, they, they just that that aggression is just seems to be lacking because they they haven't really run, been running the ball like they used to. And again, they I mean like like uh, Ryan Clark I about to say Frank Clark, but like Ryan Clark said, he said all Ravens running backs. He said they my age, and he's been retired for a while now. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, just, just been rough. It's been rough for them at running back. It's been rough for them on offensive line. Um, but even on defensive line, when you talk about the lack of, uh, heart, uh, the lack of guts, um, again, that's tackling. That's a tackling. Like these Ravens, these ain't the Ravens of old, right? You like, imagine like somebody told you 10 years ago, even five years ago, somebody told you, Hey, Ravens in the future. Ravens gonna have an issue with tackling. <laughs> you probably laugh at them. You probably be like, "What are you talking about?" Like this team, like I know eventually we're gonna change into more of an offensive team, but the Ravens an issue with tackling. Like these dudes were built on defense from the jump. You, you, you tripping, man? You, oh, you playing? Quit, quit doing. You, oh, you must be trolling, man. Get out of here with that. And then now, ten years later, five years later, you look at this and you're like, "Oh, wow." So, um. I, it's, it all starts up here. It starts up there. Um, I, like my, my guy JT, he always says, man, the, the body follows the mind. Um, and if you are a punk, I mean, not a punk. I can't call none of these dudes punk because they're they not punks. But if you just, if you're not looking to engage with somebody physically, if you second guessing yourself, if you're like, ah, nah, I, I don't feel like it. Oh, oh he looks big. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't want to tell. Oh, man, he's coming fast. I, mm. Then it's your body's going to do the same. And you, you're you going to give half effort on tackles. You, you're you not going to give your all to make it happen. It's just that that's how it's going to be. Um, so with the Ravens, they is something that needs to improve mentally. Hopefully that they can take a mental break this week with the bye and just whew, take a nice little breather and come back ready to go 
Shout out to Engraving.